You're watching WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm Corey, your host, and let's start the episode for May 14th, 2012. This week, I'm shooting the episode from my hotel here in Australia's Gold Coast at a conference called AUSSERT. So I'll start the week with a couple of AUSSERT stories and presentations I saw this week. There were two presentations of note. The first comes from Paul Vixie, one of the founders of ISC, reporting on uh, some of the results of DNS Changer. Uh, basically, DNS Changer is the malware we've been talking about in past episodes. A long time ago, authorities overtook the command and control servers for DNS Changer and changed them so that people that were infected with them could continue to browse the internet. However, in July 9th, the FBI plans to take down these servers, and if you have DNS Changer and haven't cleaned your computer or your device, uh, your internet will no longer work once these servers go down. According to Paul, there's still around 350 to 400,000 thousand infected computers that haven't been cleaned. He also suspects about a hundred thousand of these victims are actually uh, DLS routers that have been infected with DNS changer that are even harder to clean. So he had a pretty negative view saying that on July 9th a number of users will not be able to get to the internet which will cause some issues for ISPs. The next talk of note came from Mark Fabro, who spoke about some of the forensic analysis he did in situations where SCADA or industrial control facilities were infected with some sort of malware or breach. He talked about how difficult it was to do forensic examination of these systems because these are very uh, key systems that cannot go down. Usually when you forensically examine a computer system, you can take it offline, making it easier to capture some of the data you need. In this case, he had to analyze live systems that were up and carefully capture data without affecting the actual SCADA infrastructure itself while it was running. On a slightly ironic note, during the talk, some of the computer automated lighting systems on the stage started acting up and moving around in weird ways, which kind of interrupted Mark's talk. And when you're talking about attacking computer controlled SCADA systems, it's kind of ironic to see something like that happen. In the end, I don't think anyone hacked the system. I think it was just a technical glitch, but it was definitely an interesting part of his talk. Next, I'll quickly talk about some of the software updates from the week. There were two you probably want to know of. The first comes from Apple. Apple released an update for their QuickTime Media Player. Uh, this update fixed a number of vulnerabilities, uh, many of which attackers could use to execute code on your system. Essentially, if they could get uh, one of your users to download and run some specially crafted media, it could take advantage of these QuickTime flaws, which affect both Windows and Mac, by the way, uh, to gain control of your system with at least that user's privilege. The other update comes from Chrome. Uh, the Google team released Chrome 19. Uh, this fixed 20 security vulnerabilities, as well as also introduced a feature called Tab Sync, which allows you to sync your tabs no matter what device you're using Chrome from with your Chrome login. In malware news, there was two slightly interesting new pieces of malware that came out this week. The first was a, a fake Chrome installer banking trojan. Uh, this was basically a trojan that comes as, as a Chrome installer. It looks like a normal Chrome installer download. But if you install it, it actually will share your IP with the attacker and try to steal your banking credentials. The other malware update is a new variant of Zeus, which again is another banking trojan. As you probably heard from other episodes, Zeus is used to steal banking credentials. But this new variant uses a slightly new tactic. This new variant actually targets Facebook, Gmail, Hotmail, and Yahoo users. It tries to leverage the trust you might have in these big uh, internet services to try to get you to update your credit card details using what looks like a, a secure credit card update mechanism. Of course, if you supply this information, it goes straight back to the attacker who then has uh, access to your credit card details. One last interesting story of the week is a faulty Avira antivirus update. Avira is a very popular antivirus client you can get for free for home users. 
This week, Avira released a service pack update for this popular AV client that actually detected some very core Windows files as uh, infected files and actually would quarantine or remove them, causing your Windows system to be uh, inoperable. They have since quickly removed this update and apologized to their users for perhaps uh, making their system not boot properly. Nonetheless, if you're a Vera user, you might want to be careful and avoid some of the updates until you're sure they have this uh, situation remedied. So that's it for this week's quick and dirty on the road edition of WatchGuard Security Week in Review. I hope you found it informative. As usual, if you'd like more regular security updates, be sure to follow our blog, WatchGuard Security Center. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. As always, thanks for watching. And here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.